a subpar workout done consistently will outperform a perfect workout inconsistently. All right, so what does this mean? Consistency is the most important factor when it comes to your workout. Now, I know I'm being a little extreme. Of course, you can have a terrible workout done consistently and hurt yourself. But if things are within reason, it's all about consistency. That means if you don't feel like working out, uh, you wanna miss a day, just show up and do a weaker workout. Do one with less intensity. It makes a big difference. In my experience, it was almost always consistency that mattered the most. So do that, pay attention. Kind of sounds like you're saying don't <clears throat> invest in a MAPS program. Go ahead and just do a beach body program consistently. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's hard to stay, do those consistently. I'm argue against that. <laughs> because when you stop, get, when you get no results. <laughs> <laughs> right? Shots fired. There, there's a lot of things that contribute to, <coughs> to uh, consistency. One of them is results. I mean, it's of course, right? If you work out and you get very little for what uh, the time that you put into it, or you get very little for the effort that you put into it, then that's going to affect your consistency. Nobody wants to do something and get yeah. nothing in return. So that's <clears throat> that's one factor. The other one is enjoyability. How much do you enjoy it? Um, uh, the, the next one is, does it make you feel good? Uh, do you dread it? Do you dread doing it? But this is important because, you know, I, I remember even myself as a kid, um, if I couldn't do the full workout mm -hmm. uh, because of time or something like that. Uh, yeah, that was the point I was going to make. It's, it's really yeah. just like addressing the fact that it doesn't have to be the perfect workout <laughs> that's for right. you to do it. And um, a lot of times we feel that it's like, you know, if I only have this, this window of 15 minutes, like, should I even bother? I should I just wait till I have like the hour opened up and available. Um, when in fact, if you do that 15 minutes, it's going to keep that momentum going. Uh, your muscles are going to be stimulated from it. You're going to send the signal. Yep. So it's still going to benefit you quite substantially. I mean, I think I shared not that long ago <clears throat> that this was one of the biggest, uh, you know, pivots or game changers in my life, uh, my fitness journey was giving myself the permission mm -hmm. to just do one exercise. Uh, I had a really hard time with that. I was very much so all or nothing uh, all through my 20s and even part of my 30s. Uh, which is like, hey, I'm either on the diet, I'm training consistently, or I'm not. I'm mm -hmm. just completely effing it off and doing whatever and not being consistent. And <clears throat> just allowing myself uh, the grace to be able to be like, you know what, I, I'm not really feeling it today. I don't want to train. I don't I don't feel great. Let's. But you know what, I, I could just go in there and just do four sets of squats. You know, I'm just going to mm -hmm. just go do that. And I can't it can't tell you how, how surprised I was to see – uh, one, uh, the level of, um, you know, that I was able to maintain still as far as muscle and strength. And, and then also how many times did just giving myself that permission end up turning into a great workout? Uh, probably more than half. Yeah. So like a lot of times it was just telling myself that I didn't have to, and it was okay to just go do one. Then I get in the, get in the rhythm and I get it to four set. And I'm like, Oh, you know what? I, I'll do another exercise. I feel pretty good. And then in it turning into a great workout. And so uh, I, I'm sure there's a lot of people that can relate to the all or nothing uh, training mindset and how powerful it is to just give yourself that permission to like, hey, one exercise is better than nothing. This was a, a hack for me as a trainer too. <laughs> when I figured this out, my clients did so much better, right? So in the past, earlier days, if a client called me and said, oh, you know, I'm kind of tired or I'm a little sore or stiff or, you know, my knee bothers me a little bit. Maybe we should skip. And I would think to myself, oh, well, our workout plan was going to be really hard. And I'd say, yeah, yeah, let's skip this workout and I'll see you next time. Now, later on, <clears throat> I would say, no problem. We're going to go easy. In fact, I even had sessions. This happened to me, not a ton, but this happened a few times where a client would call me up and be like, man, I'm tired. I'm down. Um, you know, I just, I don't know. I'm just not feeling motivated. And I'd say, why don't we just go on a walk? Why don't you show up, we'll go on a walk. If you feel like doing more, we'll stop halfway through the walk. We'll do some calisthenics and some stretches. And if we get back to the gym and you got and you, we have some time and you want to do more, we'll do more. But why don't you just show up and let's just take it from there. <clears throat> and it was always beneficial. It was always yeah. beneficial. The client at the end of it would always say, man, I'm so glad I came. That was so great. And like you said, Adam, 50% of the time we would do that. And then they'd say, you know what? I am feeling better. Let's get in and yep. let's do some mm -hmm. more yep. exercises. But as a trainer, it got much my clients to be much more consistent. And then the value that for them was they started to develop a relationship with exercise where it didn't have to be perfect all the time. There's nothing you do in your life where it's going to be perfect all the time. 
Mm-mm. The key though is to maintain that relationship. That's why we use the the word relationship when we talk about fitness. It's like that, right? To maintain any relationship, there's ups and downs, more effort, less effort. But what's important is that you always uh, you always you know water your plants. You always yeah. put some attention towards that relationship. And a lot of times that means you just show up. It means you just show up. You go through the motions. You go easy. And again, uh, the data will show this typically. But even if if you ask trainers and coaches, they'll tell you this. Like it's it's the consistency. It's the people oh, yeah. that just show up the most that don't miss. Even if they go easy, they're the ones that get the best results. It's a, it's very parallel to business. I mean, the, the iterative approach, the product one's better than product none. It's yeah. the overthinking. It's the, it has to be perfect. Uh, got to have the right business plan before I even get started. <laughs> like, you just got to go. You got to go and you got to, like, refine. And um, it's, some days you're going to have, like, super productivity. Some days you're probably going to be uh, completely uh, unproductive. And, and that's just how it goes. But it's it's you're there and you're showing up and you're putting the work in. You know why I like this tip so much, too, was it unlocked something else for me, which was uh, the understanding of the uh, amount of overtraining I was doing. Yeah. So it started first with this uh, giving myself permission to just do one exercise and uh, and that be okay. And then recognizing like, oh my God, like my strength is doing great and I, my physique is maintaining and I'm doing hardly any of the volume. Like, oh my God, am I potentially, when I am all in the mood and in the rhythm, like am I really overdoing it because I like the burn, I like the sweat, I like that push, the intensity so much. And so this whole giving myself permission to do one exercise also unlocked me to start peering into, wow, the level of volume and intensity I was applying to my body and find a sweeter spot and go like, oh, wow, I was doing too much to achieve the same amount of results. And so it also got me to scale back and then really adopt this like, hey, there's nothing wrong with a MAPS 15 type of protocol every now and then. Totally. My go-to is um, when I'm feeling tired or stiff or whatever is I just, I go to feel, just to feel the movement, get a pump. The weight is very light. Uh, the, The reps are controlled. And I just go in there to feel good. I just want to kind of feel good. And I always, and I get, I just, it's better than missing. It's often better than, it's most often better than missing. Now missing, there's some value to missing sometimes too, when you're sick or really, really tired or super overtrained. But for the average person listening, like the the problem is typically consistency. And so just keep that in mind and, and realize that you can just show up and do something easy or do half your workout or a third of your workout or do one thing and it's going to have value. It's not a waste of time. I think that's the, the yeah. big message. Yeah, I agree. Today's YouTube giveaway is MAPS Powerlift. To enter to win, leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and also turn on your notifications. Do all those things. And if you win, we'll let you know in the comment section. We also have a sale this month uh, on some workout programs. MAPS Split is half off. And the Sexy Athlete Bundle of Programs is also half off. If you're interested, go to mapsfitnessproducts.com. And then use the code July50 for that discount. All right, here comes the show. Anyway, I was going to ask you, Justin, because I see you moving slightly uh, stiff. You look uh, a bit. My neck's a little sore. Tight. Are you right. over trained? No, no, no. <laughs> no, no. He no. was at a concert. This wasn't training. Oh, I saw you post, you and Kyle. <coughs> yeah. You took Kyle to his first uh, yeah. get down. Yeah, his first uh, real metal uh, show. Uh, and I've been indoctrinated. Did you scare him. the kid? Like, is he? I'm so he came, but he came to work, so obviously I, he didn't get scared. I don't know. Like, I think I think he's into it now. Like, I, <laughs> you I think I'm pretty sure he was he was feeling it. I, I was watching him the whole time just to make sure you know it wasn't too um, scary and wild and you know like I do it because it's it's a very small community who likes this kind of it's it's not just like Metallica or like Corn. That's or, like that's like metal pop. Compared yeah, to what exactly you that. Yeah, that might as well be Lady Gaga. You know, <laughs> in comparison to this. So um, we <laughs> we watched some pretty crazy bands, and he was getting into it and feeling it. Uh, I was getting into it and feeling it a little aggressively. Uh, what did you turns do, out. bro? Did you get so, in the mosh pit? Yeah, I got in the mosh pit. Uh, and here's bro, the thing. You Justin, are too what are you old for doing, this, bro. bro. What are you, 40, dude, bro, what are you 44? For, you're in the mosh pit? Yeah. yeah. Did you hurt somebody? Um, so 
He did. No, nah, I didn't hurt him. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> How do you know? Because I mean, because he still was walking around. He was fine. He, he, you he walked know. it off. All right, he, what he walked it off. I want to know. How do you? First of all. I well, I've never seen a real mosh pit in real life. Okay. So really? no, never in real life. You never been to like one of these concerts? You no. listen to that music more than I do. I know. Just I'm actually my, surprised. You, go, no, you work out to it all the time. I so. don't go to a concert. You know, I had yeah. a, you know, I had a, a a chick roommate that was into that. That's the I went to probably four or five different concerts like that. Like Dropkick really? Murphy and like I uh, forget who else I went and okay, saw. Well, like, that's, yeah, that's like punk, but yeah, that's they did different rules. Kill switch engage, that type of stuff. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. So what is it what are the rules? You're you're there and they where does it form how does so it happen? It, it's kind of funny because uh, they always have like it's always like a pattern um and it it's funny because you always end up finding there's usually like two or three guys that are like the pit masters like you know the, the <laughs> pit really bosses. you don't think it's a thing until you realize like oh there's you could see who's sort of there drumming it up and then also sort of like guiding everybody uh and, and getting everybody to kind of uh abide by their standards or whatever so it's like managed uh but usually by a couple of guys so it just starts in the crowd yeah starts in the crowd i mean sometimes the lead singer or, or the band will try to like coordinate it and be like okay like you know and like give you the signal or like split the room and then have everybody crash together in the middle which uh the the band before that did that and i was like oh my god it was sick it was great uh everybody <laughs> just like split apart and then like smashed in the middle and it just was like melee uh, but it, <laughs> he's the only middle-aged man I know that sees that. Yeah. He goes, Oh yes. Oh, <laughs> it, was, it was amazing. You guys, I have a dark side. I, I have admitted yes, this we know many this. times. We know this. Um, I'm convinced this is all that. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yes, I'm convinced it's all that. That's why I asked if you hurt somebody. Yeah, it's like, Everybody ah! there has the same shit and issues I do. Yeah, like, yeah. That, and we love and we recognize to see it the bathroom each in other. that place. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah. What's what'd you say? <laughs> I said to see the bathroom in that place would just, be <laughs> just, <laughs> just, <laughs> just flat. Not that kind of shit. Everybody uh, with gut issues in there. <laughs> yeah, just a bunch of raging gut issues. <laughs> 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 metal just speaks to us and uh, keeps us regular. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah. So it, there's code uh, for sure for these things. Cause it's not like they're fighting. Like we're not like fighting or like, it's more like bumping into each it's other. Interesting more well, there's it's code like this, right? And correct me if I'm wrong. Cause it's been a long time since I've been around this. It's like, uh, like you're not supposed to like throw your elbows. Like you could use like your chest and your shoulders, right? Or can you use your elbows? Is that like, okay. I mean, I mean you can. Oh, it's, you can. Sure. Okay. But, but that was like no elbows to the face. So that was like kind of like, well, a, yeah, I mean, not unless you're trying to be a dick. The thing is, um, if you're a dick, you if you go super it. aggressive, then you're, people are going to turn on you. And usually that's where like the the, the pit boss or uh, you know somebody else like the myself or, or you know some of my friends we'd be on the outside and we'd look for like the bullies and we'd target them. Uh, yeah. Wouldn't that make you the bully? <laughs> the bully of the bullies. <laughs> it is, it hey. is a, now I understand how a bully justifies their behavior. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, we look for somebody yes. who's being a bully so we can it, bully them. And really, <laughs> it's like the socially acceptable version of a bully is like, yeah. that's the route I go. He's like the mosh superhero. Yeah. Oh, gotta save that guy. <laughs> yeah, so do, do they, and you, what, you guys just run in a circle or just blast each other? Like, yeah, they happening? vary. So it, yeah. It's kind of funny talking about this stuff with you guys. Um, but it's like you guys wouldn't understand. You guys don't understand. Uh, yeah, there's the circle pit, which is, you know, it's it, you just kind of run in a circle and you kind of throw your arms and, you know. Mm. You, some people dance with it. And it's like kind of like slam dancing, as they call it, or whatever. Uh, you know, there's some concerts where, um, and I wasn't aware of this, the first time I went to like one of these like hardcore shows and venues. Hardcore is the craziest in terms of crowd involvement. Because they bring people on stage, everybody's jumping. Like, there's like it's melee. Like people do like punch each other out and like throw blows, and it's just like whoa. Uh, it's it's like the straight edger kind of stuff. So, yeah. like, so you get these guys that are like, okay, we don't drink, we don't smoke, you know, we, we don't have sex. We'll like, okay, obviously you're pissed off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what else do you do? Like, you just beat people up. Yeah. yeah. Uh, like so, I avoid those shows. Uh, but, uh, this was one of those, like, it's more happy, like everybody's in a good vibe, uh, but also aggressive, like, uh, and you want to like body up on people and, and, uh, it's more like, I, I, I would, I would, uh, uh, parallel it more to like, uh, uh hitting drills and like football or something mm. where it's just like 
there's just that 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 contact. I crave that. It's like all controlled time. aggression, almost. Yeah, it's like yeah, it's like you you ha you have guardrails, uh, but it's a safe outlet for you to kind of let a bit of that out. Is there a place that Sal can go to learn about this? And yeah, like, and I'll class. just so throw him in. Yeah, yeah he's like, no, there's like a YouTube. You know video that that or was like a course he could, he could sign <laughs> up my for. Boy, hey, my boy, no. you hear that? No, <laughs> no. <laughs> that sounded so weak, dude. <laughs> Maybe there's another no, no, like no, Sal no. Sal kind of brain person. No, no, hold on. Like, second, hold on create a, second. a course for this. I want to hear. Okay, so you said you you, hit, you blasted somebody. Yeah, I did. So what happened? How did that happen? Well, uh, it just kind of ramped up, like the music. Like so, this band I haven't seen them play in like well over a decade. They were one of my favorite bands of all time, and like I, so uh, I had this like. I don't know. It, it was nostalgia and it was like, I was uh, feeling it and like, I just couldn't help it. Like I just like t I told Kyle, I'm like, see ya. And just ran in there and, mm -hmm. and just kind of went after it. And, uh, there was a guy that was like going the, the opposite. So he was doing like, uh, the opposite direction that everybody was, was moving. Oh, and some people like breaking the rules. What is well, that? some people do that just for conflict oh. and, and just to try to be it's like, punk. you're asking for it when you do. Yeah. That. He's asking for it. And so, and he and, and he was a big dude, like really like a muscular dude. Did he have a shirt off? Uh, he had like a tank top on, I think. Did he um, look like like what do you mean by big? Like bodybuilderish? Like, yeah, he had like big muscles, like oh, big course. puffy muscles. Big fluffy, big balloon. Just animal. wanted to find out how functional yeah. those muscles oh, were. Oh. Well, I just I wanted see to a guy see. With abs. I, <laughs> Pussy. You <laughs> obviously <laughs> work out, right, bro? Um, so Let's see if this, this feels like the Nautilus uh, curl machine. So he's just doing this kind of thing, like marching against everybody and kind of punking these these kids and these people and like, and so. I don't know, like, you know, the, the, like, ah, okay, so okay, it just I, came out. I, I, I want to see how this works. Okay, so <laughs> the circle down. is uh, as big as this room, probably? About this room yeah, size? Yeah, probably, yeah. Okay, so it's about this room. It's a good this, and let, let's say it's it's moving clockwise. Yes. And there's this guy, and you you see him across the circle, and he's... And he looks like... Yeah, and I just, like, kind of beelined it in. Okay, so so I'm, I'm going around this way. He He's, like, right here, kind of walking his way, and I, and I see him coming up, and he's just... Like and this. he looks like a physique competitor. He yeah, looks like, like he like, does like Adam's competitors back in the day. So I mean, I didn't do a whole lot. Like I didn't, I don't know. I just it, here's the thing. So he he got close to me, and then I just like I just do what I do, and I I, I got down, you know, just enough so I had leverage, and then I just kind of came up and threw my like, hips into did it. You three point stance his ass, bro, dude. I just <laughs> I basically just launched him. <laughs> so like I so I got him. underneath him, He's and so then just happy. boom. And then uh, it gave him some snap, like I was doing like a clean or something, and just boom. And then uh, he flew probably like, you know, five yards or so, and then ran on his back. <laughs> oh, my God. And then I God. just, I felt so good about it that I just kept going, and I broke code, which was like, if you do that, you got to like pick him up. Oh, yeah. And, and have him keep going, because I, I wasn't doing that to like but hurt him or anything. Yeah. I was just like, you know, I was like, hey, bro, you want to go the wrong way? Here's what's going to happen. Yeah. Kind of a thing. Yes. And. So yeah, so I actually went back and I like shook his hand. We hugged, was he hugged like, it out. Was he breathing okay? Was he, he, was, right? he was all right. He was yeah, a little, he was, he was wheezy, a little wheezy. <laughs> now, how often? <laughs> I, I feel like uh, alcohol, mosh pit, breaking rules. I mean, it just sounds like a recipe for bar fights. Yeah. Like how how does this not always turn into a bar? Because they're letting it out like this. Yeah, because it's it's like a really controlled controlled violence. So it's it. <laughs> It's like, um, yeah, but Justin, even like that situation right there, like that's how close is that to a fight right there? You broke, it'd be different. You launch him and then you went over and you pick him up. Then it's like, you know why I feel like, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm just imagining the scenario. If you start a fight in there, then everyone is going to get on you. Yeah. Am I right? Okay. Yep. So, yeah, so it's yeah. like, it's, it's a, there's a code. It's self-regulated. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All Interesting. Right. So, and, and even then, like somebody was like, oh, you should, should have picked him up. Like somebody kind of voiced that in my ear and I was like, oh, you're right. And then I, that's what drove me to go over and mm. kind of be like, oh, sorry, Interesting. bro. Interesting. He's crying. <laughs> he crying wasn't bit. crying, but. Why'd you do that? But yeah, that that's the thing. It's like, it, it. For me, it's kind of funny because uh, I've I've had a, a few of these outbursts lately, um, where like I just got really like I've just been dealing. You with seem so much some of the darkness. Week, though, you know? <laughs> he lets it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have a so you know I He's told been good sleep now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, things are going too well. So um, it, I, I actually like I was getting frustrated and um, I told you guys like I would ha I would send my son down to like beat up on the. Um, 
on the punching bag as, as an outlet for oh, him. Yeah, yeah. I've actually had to do that quite a few times oh, wow. as of late. And I'm like, where is this coming from? But it's, but it gets it out. Like I'm like, it, it, it just helps me to, to process it and, and just get rid of it. You know what happens to volcanoes, right? Yeah. They let out a little bit of steam here and there, but eventually it's just the, the big one comes. Yeah. Well, it, you know, like it's, I'm, I'm trying to deal with it and manage Maybe it we gotta the do best the, I can. Maybe we got to do the 22nd oxytocin hug for Justin. <laughs> yes. <laughs> just let, yes. No, that's I mean, you guys works. tried that yet? I mean, yeah. Anyone put that into practice yeah. yet? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I did it to my daughter. Oh, like, oh yeah. She was squirming, trying oh, to get yeah. off me. No, yeah. honey, I got to hold it for hold 20 still. seconds. You got, 10 more sec- you got 10 more seconds. Hold still. <laughs> we got to let out the oxygen. I'll freaking right. body you guys. Then the whole th- yeah, <laughs> Just yeah. will fight you. Yeah. Yeah. Then she jokes around about it. So the whole day she was like, oh, oh, I just released oxytocin right now, dad. Oh, I just, I'm releasing oxytocin. I'm like, it's gross. You sound gross. <laughs> stop, stop saying that. <laughs> hey, dad, what releases your oxytocin? <laughs> 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 Yeah, but yeah, I did it. With but him. we had, we had a lot of fun though. I That's was, awesome. I was I was glad that like Kyle like went because he was definitely like I didn't I had a very slim list of like people I could even invite. Um, <laughs> <laughs> one of my friends, I didn't even think it. he would go to that. I was, I, so- dude, and it was because like I had introduced him to a few bands and he was listening to Always Working Out and so I was uh, like I don't know it was a long shot I was like hey would you you know would you, you want to go see this be cool about going to this and he's like oh yeah I'll check it out yeah, he told me now he, just, wanted, just, he said he wanted to meet with me afterwards maybe he's going to talk to me about <laughs> yeah, <laughs> hey, it's what it just, hey Justin I'm a little concerned oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know I'm a little concerned this guy's <laughs> this, <laughs> this guy's got a short fuse he didn't do it though huh <clears throat> no I mean he yeah he I, I don't know if he went in or not he, if he did, I didn't see. So uh, you'd have to ask him, but I'm pretty Good sure he did. I, yeah. I, I should have thrown him in. I was like, missed yeah. opportunity for me because that's how I got introduced to it is my cousin. Just threw you in? Just threw me in. And I was like probably I've been in 12 one or, two or 13. You have? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's just like you said, like everybody's moving around together. It's yeah. so like, and you're kind of like bouncing off. It's but I thought there was like, I thought I was not supposed to throw out. I thought it was like, you sh- you can shoulder and you just kind of. I've seen people in, I don't know. I've seen this on videos where they're swinging their hands. Well, like, so that's more like the hardcore style and, oh. they, and they do these like wild like we call it ninja pitting but it's like they just like oh my god there's they no, just like punch and kick and <laughs> spin and do crazy stuff like all in place and so all right so it, it's obviously cathartic it's the, yeah. the reason why people do it is if it's like a great release yeah it is it's it, it for sure are, and, are, are you ever do you ever see girls in a mosh pit yeah yeah, this wow. blow your mind. Yeah. If I was a therapist, I'd sit outside and just give my card out. Oh, yeah. yeah. Make hella money. Yeah. You know? Just free appointments. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I'd sit outside of one of those concerts and just be like, I, know. I got you. Come fix your trauma with me. Yeah. Come fix your yeah. trauma. Go to a rap session just drug test everybody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I would imagine I would imagine that, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's cathartic. It's a release for people who feel like they can't let out whatever they're feeling. And because yeah. it's controlled, there's probably a, a camaraderie. Oh, total. Yeah. yeah. What's funny about it? Everybody <clears throat> looks scary, aggressive, like tattooed, long hair. Like, well, I bet you if, the, the sweethearts. I yeah. bet you the, all of them. I bet you with girls are in the mosh pit. I bet you oh, that they get protected. Overly, by the, they're like big brothers. Like, yeah, everybody's yeah. just like, Whoa. like yes, this poor girl just got flattened. I've seen that before, where the guy, where a girl goes down, and the dude's like, pow, pow, like yeah, they, everybody cleared the locks, cleared locks, the, arms, the, and then the floor. Let the, so the pit's kind of getting migrated around. So I've seen it's that. like human nature. It's like it's yeah. like primal human nature, uh, but uh. dude, it, 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 I think it's grown in interest. Almost like uh, you see girls squatting, deadlifting. I'm gonna bring us back to fitness. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Thanks, but, Justin. Well, very yeah. nice job there. That was Thank good. you. Great, I know. Great job. I've been working on my transitions, <clears throat> but yeah, it's it, it's it's crazy. There's definitely been a lot more girls at these kind of shows and events, and um, even lead singers like you're seeing a lot more like front front women oh, wow. uh, that um, they actually like growl scream this band eth- ethos or uh, anthos i think their name was but uh, they were a local band and uh i'd actually seen them at this last festival but this girl was like like really like guttural awesome. noises coming out of her and then like really like amazing pitched like singing in combo you, and i'm like whoa this is trippy do you remember when like i'm trying him talking about this is making me think about like when i was a kid when I got like really frustrated, so obviously Justin was a kid who, when he got really frustrated, he probably went out and did something really physical to exert that energy. Mm-hmm, like if mm-hmm. he was mad at his parents yeah. or mad, like, and so I'm trying to remember, like, do you remember what you, I remember what I did. Do you remember, do you, what would you do if you, when you were younger 
and you were really angry at your parents or really angry at something, mm. like how did you how did you cope with that when you were a kid? Sal you used know? his words. Yeah, no, <laughs> so you read I the did. dictionary. Yeah, I, just, I had a problem with that. Like, I couldn't I'm use my re- words. I'm gonna read all of L. Yeah. All of no, L today. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, gonna, no. I'm gonna memorize all of the you L know, words. Let me think about that. Uh, I would see. We used to do a lot of neighbor. We did do a lot of neighborhood fights and stuff in the neighborhood, but it was always. We had boxing gloves or one of my friends had um, the pads that, I don't know if a fullback wears them <clears throat> on the hand, on their hands and forearms uh, or is it uh, running okay. back. Uh-huh. And we would do stuff like that. I'm trying to think, did I ever get really frustrated and have to let it out uh, physically? Well, like, no, I, I, how would you cope <laughs> with it? So I, I, didn't, I didn't do... <laughs> No, no, no. So I, I, it doesn't necessarily mean physical. It's like, how did you cope with it? Because I didn't do physical. Like what I did was actually probably more on the meditative flow state. Like I would mm. go listen to music. I would go put my headphones yeah, on. Cry. Yeah, cry. <laughs> <laughs> lay in my bed, stare at the wall. Literally, I'd listen to like five albums, like back oh, to back yeah. to back and do that. Or I would go down to the courts and I would shoot the ball, just shoot yeah. and shoot. Well, I started hours. lifting weights at, at right around that that <clears throat> age, right? Oh, so would you lift? I was 14 when I started working out consistently. That's right around, right around the time. Right when you have to get all that anger. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I was yeah. lifting and I was, and I was overdoing it. Right. Cause I was a kid and didn't know what I was L- doing. Lifting helped a lot. So yeah. I would go out into my backyard and I would work out for two hours. I mean, my workouts used to look like the, the encyclopedia bodybuilding, Arnold's uh, encyclopedia. Yeah. And I would literally go through the list of exercises and I would just do every single one uh, that uh. I could do. And I'd be out there yeah, all day. I, I, I pictured Doug being more like uh, Justin with like the angry chimp side. Do you remember what you, how you used to cope when you were angry at your parents when you were younger? Do you remember? Yeah. Uh, besides punching holes in walls, yeah. did you do that? Were you a whole uh, no, wall? Okay, hole puncher. I, didn't okay. Didn't. Hole puncher? <laughs> I, I was. A uh, I just go stew, you know, probably mm. in my room. Uh, I was into art and things like that, and reading comics. You color coloring books and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Did you draw people? No, we like had no heads TV, falling. so I I just had to go in my room and uh, entertain myself. Mm. Mm. You were scrappy too. You said I was. Well, yeah. my brother was six years older than me, and so uh, I got into a lot of quick. fights. You said you, were, you said you were a chubby kid too. So. I was chubby, yeah. yeah. And uh, my brother, yeah, he would hold me down. So I had to learn some skills to try to maneuver. Yeah. But that really helped on the playground. Yeah. Because uh, when the little kids would call me fat, so I, if I if I could catch them, that was first <laughs> <laughs> I would destroy them. You were, you, yeah. I bet you were adorable. You were probably the cutest <laughs> little kid. You know what I mean? I was. I was so cute. Yeah, 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 round yeah. I can just picture them right now. I just squeeze the hell out of them. Yeah, just yeah. feed them muffins. Actually, some pictures. I have to show them. Oh, too. I want to see them. Ooh. You know, back in the day, you know, kids now, if they get in a fight, it's big trouble in school. Big trouble. Oh, yeah. yeah. When I was they on, expel I was, them now, right? Oh, when like I back was, in the days, you uh, had like strikes. You could get away strikes, with multiple fights. Sometimes the teach. Sometimes it would just break us up. Yeah, and yeah. they wouldn't do anything, or they just tell our parents, "Hey, you know." I got in a lot of fights yeah. as a kid too, but not they for those reasons. You know, I got I, kids started fights. I got into fights because someone either picked a fight with me, or yeah. I had friends that started fights, and then I was. I couldn't stand. I could not stand seeing uh, kids get picked on. I don't know what it. You know what it was. I know what it was. Uh, a, I did therapy on this. <laughs> I have younger siblings and I was parentified yeah, yeah. so early that I was very protective of my siblings. Yeah, and then yeah. it extended out to anybody. I who had I the felt. exact, I had the exact same issue. Yeah, so so, mine was like my friends. I was protective of yeah, my friends, of yeah. my group of friends. Uh, That's right. Cause you're the oldest too. Yeah, yeah. So I had that same. So if I saw someone getting issue. picked on, uh, like I remember in like, uh, was it fifth grade? I saw this kid, um, like making this, he made this girl cry. He was calling her. I don't remember what he said anywhere. But she was, she was crying. I think he was talking about her glasses. And uh, I walked up to him from behind while he's making her cry. And I, you know, right in between his legs, kicked him in the nuts. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> as hard as I could, too. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, yeah. and Because I, I couldn't handle it. I couldn't handle seeing that. You know? yeah. But I think it was because I was. Uh, I, I hate. I actually hated to fight. But I was, Who likes it? He said Justin. No, it's controlled, dude. I, like, I, I don't yeah. like her. No, I hated people. it. No. I hate it. But I was the first to defend a friend. So yeah. if somebody picked a fight with my friend, I would be the first person to go to go get him before anybody mm. else did. But I didn't like it. You know, well, it wasn't because yeah. I liked it at all. No, I hated it too. I get nervous. Um, but anyway, all right, I'm going to take a left uh, because I wanted to talk to you guys about, uh, do you guys know what uh, PFAs are or PFAs? Paid, paid, paid in fulls. PFAs. Paid in fulls. PFAs. No, it's a uh, poly, you wrote it down for me, polyfluoroacyl 
uh, substances. These are chemicals. No idea. Known as forever chemicals. Okay. If you start to read uh, up about yeah, this. Forever so chemical, yeah. You hear me, you've heard me say on the podcast before xenoestrogens. So these are chemicals that have like a kind of a weak affinity for the estrogen receptor, meaning they, they do activate the estrogen receptor to an extent. But over time, they can cause estrogenic effects in the body. They can cause, cause hormone disruption. And especially these category of chemicals have been shown to cause certain types of cancers, like increases in breast cancers. They're called forever chemicals because they, they take forever to break down. So once they're in the environment, once they're in your body, whatever. They just hang around. And they find them in, uh, in a majority of women's breast milk. Mm. In a majority of men's testicles, their <coughs> hormones, they find them in babies. They find them. Wow. And they're in, they're, it, these chemicals are really good at repelling oil, water, grease, and stuff like that. So the high, the, the biggest offenders, nonstick pans, mm. nonstick pots, nonstick pans, which, um, you know, we, we're working with these new partners um, right now called Our Place. Mm. They make, um, you know, the cookware. Cast iron. Cast, Cast iron. iron, but covered in, in ceramic. Yeah, it's awesome. So it doesn't stick. So it doesn't stick, and you get the benefit but of it, cast iron. But, you know, it gets the nice, even heating of cast yeah, iron. Yeah, I love Longevity cast of cast iron. iron. Yeah. So the, the ceramic coating prevents things from sticking on it, but it doesn't have these chemicals. Now, why, you know, I, I, I think it's important we work with these people is because people in the fitness community <clears throat> are some of the highest users of nonstick cookware. When you see people prep food and all yeah. that stuff, oh, yeah. it's always nonstick, mm -hmm. always, always nonstick because yeah. it makes it easy. So uh, I thought it was important that we work with a, a yeah, company we, like them. We, uh, when we started, it was so funny. I, we were up in Seattle for my family's thing and we were actually talking uh, about the brand and I had two of my family members already were purchasing from them. It's, it's I didn't really even, nice already, oh, stuff. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I didn't, I didn't even- It's very high quality. I mean, we didn't, I didn't find out about the brand until they had sent us some of the, uh, the, the pots. Yeah. And then, uh, of course, we worked out the partnership and then I was uh, talking to them about it. They're like, oh my God, that's my, my favorite cookware. And I'm like, oh wow, that's good to know. So, but I love it. I mean, we we switched. I don't know how many. We years got rid back. of all of our. Yeah, we, a I long almost. Time ago. I, it's, I'm trying to think of where and when I cook on something that's not cast iron. I mean, I cook almost always I know. on cast iron. Most things are cast iron now. Yeah, yeah same. That we yeah. cook with. I even like just the whole cleaning process of it. I think it's easier to clean and to maintain and take care of, anyways, yeah. too. So, it's you, like, you know, cast iron in general is just the longevity of that <laughs> is so crazy that you have families that will pass on cast iron pots and pans because they just last. They oh, last yeah. forever. Yeah. You know, um, yeah. Very sturdy. But yeah, their products are really good and they have that that nice coating so you don't have to worry so much about uh, you know the stick. But when you look into, and I, I implore our audience, look into these chemicals where you find them. Um, they're Of all the environmental toxins that we get exposed to, these are the worst ones. In well, fact, they're, they're bad. They're so bad that even our, our own government uh, agencies say these are bad, which you know yeah. they don't say that about everything. So- Okay, so and, and is it like do they? Where else can you find them? I know obviously you find them there, but like, uh, is it like in any kind of spray or anything or plastics any kind probably. of yeah, plastic? You, yeah, and, you'll find them in. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, receipts will have these types of chemicals. Um, waxy, uh, the waxy feel. To oh, that's right. Yeah, and then Max if you have anything that, that repels water. So a special jacket or uh, whatever oh, really? that beads mm. up and it's got some, and it's like, wow, look, there's no water or whatever. Oftentimes they use these chemicals. Wow. Yeah. Uh, you know, okay. to cause you know, it's interesting. I watched a movie not long ago, came up in my feed called Dark Waters. Yeah. It's a uh, 2019 movie with uh, Mark Ruffalo and it's about them suing DuPont over like Teflon. And it's a quite a remarkable story. Yeah. How they were just poisoning people with these forever chemi chemicals. Yeah. And uh, they eventually won. But that's that's the one where the mm. cattle was dying yeah. off and everything in yeah. the whole town. And so right. they, a lot went bad before they. They're even, bad news. Yeah, they're really bad news. It's <laughs> wild when something gets market share and then news comes out that it's potentially bad because they have a lot of market share and the influence that they have. It often takes a long time. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, the FDA just banned uh, BVO. What does that stand for? Uh, bromide. Uh, oh yeah. Look that up, Doug. Now, I've been hearing from the health and wellness community about BVO for a long time. And you're seeing wellness products that say no BVO, no BVO, right? Uh, FDA finally banned it. Now, this is years later. Hmm. Years later that they're, that they're finally banning it. In the meantime, people have been consuming products uh, with these like like sodas and drinks and stuff. Have it in there. It's yeah, what's brominated the vegetable oil. Yes. Uh, which yeah. sounds horrible. 
Yeah, well, no. Some people are like, oh, it's vegetable oil. What's the big yeah. deal? It's just oil. No, it's uh, it's, it's they put the it in FDA. soft drinks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's to prevent, uh, I think, certain flavors from separating, so it keeps it all uh, uniform. What do you think the, the What do you think we're going to have like as far as the best way to measure uh, the the benefits of you eliminating that? Like, do you think that we're going to have enough cohorts of people that went BPA free and yeah. didn't do any of that stuff for extended period of time. And then enough people that, Oh, I don't give a shit. I'm going to, I'm going to cook the way I, on, on my Teflon and all this stuff and not, not care about nothing and, and compare them. Are we going to be able to really do you know that? The, the problem is, is that the timeline is humans. We're really bad at long timelines. Yeah. We're not good at it. I so know. if it's like, it takes 15 years, eh, people don't, almost don't even care even if yeah. you show them yeah, all right. uh they kind of don't care um it's when short when the timeline's short that people can get fearful and say okay but if it's a long timeline like okay over the course of your lifetime your cancer risk goes up you know by x percent or whatever then people <coughs> like, i mean whatever, we did a good care. job with uh I, or kind of i guess with cigarettes and it's yeah. tied to cancer because that's not overnight it's not like you go smoke a pack of cigarettes and you get cancer the next day yeah. it's but we did enough uh, we did enough in that department where we moved the needle because a they, bit. we actually had a campaign to inform the public and scare them a little bit. That's oh, that's yeah. why, you know. I mean, it, it, they, look, they showed those pictures on the back of the um, yeah. boxes. Wasn't that a whole campaign at one point? Yeah. Where had, I like, know they did in Europe. You ever you ever see what they look like? Like in gnarly, like uh, where where they had like the. Um, they still do that. I think. I think they still have a little nasty picture on the side of the cigarettes like that. It was yeah, emphysema pics and like like the real like the ones where they had like the little breathing. You know, even here. with even with cigarettes. So I'm going to be careful with how I say this, right? The ink. So people, when you think of of cigarettes, what do you think of? Like the worst thing. Like what what happens if you smoke cigarettes? Lung cancer. Lung cancer. The actual data it does increase your risk of lung cancer. It's not a huge number that people think. It's mm -hmm. actually not a huge number at all. It increases it enough to where it makes a difference, but it's not this massive number. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, but that doesn't tell the whole story. Uh, smoking cigarettes increases the risk of all, all chronic everything. diseases. Yeah. If you, if you go to yeah. like an insurance company, if it's you all even, kinds. Yeah. If you heart disease, it's, it's everything. Know, blood clots, it's everything. Yeah. Right? It exaggerates it. But so they use lung cancer uh, as a way to really scare people because that's yeah. scary. That's the yeah. scariest one. Yeah, it is. Well, and, and is it because of the other things that are attached to that person? Like a person who smokes cigarettes is also less likely to go to the gym, less likely to take frequent oh, walks. Oh, no, they've less isolated it. Okay, so yeah, it's been yeah. isolated. Okay. Oh, yeah, they've done, yeah, they've controlled okay. the shit out of it. Okay, okay. Yeah, it's 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 not good for you at all. Because remember, like I've talked about this in old episodes that um, for a long time they thought uh, drinking coffee was bad for you because they didn't control uh, cigarette smokers because mm -hmm. uh, especially back in the 70s and 80s yeah yeah people who drink the most coffee smoke cigarettes yep apparently it's it a good was peanut butter and jelly yeah you it know was the, that was the the combo back yeah, then no, that's no, that's what you'll see all sure. that did yeah. you, any of you guys end up watching Furioso yet did you guys watch no it? Oh. no you would mention it yeah Dude, i need to watch it you know what i did watch what i watched uh worst roommate ever on netflix oh you watched it i saw the preview we were gonna watch that Bro. worth a watch or what yeah so each episode is a different, different story yeah different story I saw so that. i watched the first one. Oh <laughs> my god bro there's this woman i'm gonna tell you what it was about so spoiler alert right this woman it was 22 just got divorced and you know made this friend becomes best friends with this girl two months later like let's let's just be roommates or whatever and they become totally close right good friends the story continues, and I don't know how much long, longer later, a year or two later, this other girl, there's signs. She becomes jealous. Like, whenever she tries to be with other friends, she gets jealous. If she gets a boyfriend, she acts kind of bitchy. Uh, her other friends are telling her, like, I think she has a crush on you. I think she likes you. So that became, like, maybe the, the theme. Nonetheless, she stuck around. They were good friends. Then she gets pregnant. She gets She ends up getting pregnant. The guy takes off. So she's kind of like, and she slipped a disc at the same time. So she can't work and she's pregnant. So now she's dependent on this woman to help her, to take care of her. It's like misery. Oh, bro. Then it starts to go, it starts to get weird. It starts to get really weird. This woman is taking care of her. The, the Her back gets worse and worse and worse. She has to take all these painkillers over time. So this other roommate starts taking care of her kid, starts taking her kid to school, starts doing, she gets a letter in the mail one day that where that her roommate is fighting for custody of her son. What? Oh my She's like, excuse God. me? She calls her up on the phone. Are you trying to get custody of my son? She goes, yes, I am. And then hangs up on her. So of course she calls 911. The cops call her back and say, she has a restraining order on you. 
And she's and in the report it says you're abusive to your child and that you're addicted to painkillers. She's like, wow. excuse me. So for ten days she didn't get her kid. Oh my god. The police god. investigator, they then they come out and they realize, oh, you've had seven back surgeries or whatever. This woman's obviously crazy. Give her back her kid. So she moves out, but she has no place to stay, no money. Ends up going in one of those like centers. Her son, by the way, is autistic, so that adds a spin to this. So she separates from this woman. Living in this place, her kid misses that woman because she created a bond. She needs help or whatever. Gets in contact with that woman again. That woman apologized. By the way, as you're watching this, you realize you also got a problem. You've got you're in this crazy abusive relationship. Right, you keep right, coming, you keep coming back. back. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Moves back in with her. Oh god. And then it gets real crazy. Oh man. She needs more surgeries. Okay. And uh, and this woman's in charge of cleaning her her wounds and stuff. And so while she's cleaning her wounds, so she's telling the story. She's like, you know, and she would like rub my my wound because it was on her spine. And I'd be like, what are you doing? She's like, oh, I'm just checking it to make sure it's okay or whatever. And then it started to hurt. And she's like, does it look okay? And she's like, yeah, you're fine. Well, anyway, it gets so bad. She's in bed. She can't breathe because the swelling is pressing on her neck. Calls an ambulance, goes to the hospital. Doctor looks and goes, this is the worst infection I've ever seen. It was MRSA. So then she's in the hospital this whole time. Goes back, hasn't figured out there was the, it was Girl her roommate. Dude. Yeah. Cause it was obviously her goes back. And then she has these weird episodes where, uh, in, she passes out and wakes up in the hospital and they check her blood sugar and it's like 10 or 13. And this keeps happening. They can't figure out why her blood sugar would crash so hard. She just can't figure it out what's going on or whatever. Anyway, uh, as this came, by the way, this is over the course of 15 years. Oh God, that long. <laughs> yes. Over the course of 15 years, they've been roommates and stuff. Horrible. So she's having these repeated episodes where she ends up in the hospital. Can't figure out what's going on. Finally, her roommate gets caught on the dark web trying to buy Versa, which is like MRSA, but worse. This is like, you get infected with this, especially if you're immunocompromised, you're going to die. So the, F so the FBI investigate this, see that the roommate is on her, because she put her on her insurance policy, that she could potentially be the custodian to take care of her child. Like, oh, we have, this This looks like a motive. So they go in and they start interviewing her and they're like, your roommate bought Versa and we think she was trying to kill you. She's like, no way, that would have never happened, whatever. And then they're like, well, we've seen some other purchases that she's made on the dark web. And she go, and then this woman used to be a nurse. She goes, did she buy insulin? And they're like, yeah, insulin and benzos. So she was shooting her up with insulin in the middle of the night after she would drug her with the benzos to get her insulin to crash. Oh and then she was planning on on poisoning her with this crazy wow, story over like a 15 year period. Damn, dude. dude, the whole Psychopath. thing was so crazy. <laughs> Make you never want to have a stressed out, uh, dude. I was watching. I was so stressed out. Did you guys have a lot of roommates? Did you do? Uh, oh, Katrina no. and I were talking the other day about my place, and yeah, I was. And you I was had like, a lot of roommates. I did. I, I think I had like I think we counted like nine, like nine different roommates. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I had a lot of different roommates at one at live. I mean, I had that three bedroom house, and you know, I had. For almost nine years, eight nine years. Were they all good? No, no. Oh, no, you had no, the no. one dude that was the. the I've had drugs. Uh, yeah, I had the I had the one guy that was like a friend and coworker that was doing cocaine in the room all night, and I had no idea. I mm -hmm. like I, I was so that was young. I was like in my mid twenties, so I was pretty. I think at that time in my life, I'd only seen cocaine like one time before that. And didn't know any of the signs, right? Like bad breath and like restless and like up all night, like all these you things. Thought are, it was energetic. Yeah, like yeah, no. <laughs> Looking back now, like you know, like I remember, like I'd wake up to go pee at like four in the morning, and he'd be like in the living so room, like noises. playing video games, you yeah. know. And then we'd be up at six o'clock in the morning to go to work, and he'd be like in the car with me. And then his breath was so bad, like it would stunk the whole car up every oh. morning. And I remember it being so bad that like. It was, I was like, man, I'm going to make sure this guy's brushing his teeth. I remember w watching him brush. Like, He's brushing his teeth. How does it stink so bad? Right. So all these signs like from a, a Coke habit that you, I, yeah. I didn't know about when I was that age. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it wasn't until all I saw all the straws and the razor blade marks. And after he, after he left that I, it all came together for me. Uh, then I had another roommate who uh, used to leave his half eaten dishes under his bed. And that, that didn't come out until he left also. And I'm like, 
cleaning up his room and there's like pots and pans from like eight months before. Why? I know, just weird. Like, how does that even happen? Why? How, it, how so, long does it take you to wash a pot? He was a fitness guy too. He was a, he was a, a buff fitness, good looking dude that had chicks over all the time and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Totally had game, everything. And like, so it never dawns on me that this dude is this much of a slob, a slob. <laughs> until after he leaves. And, and I'm like pulling out like, you know, pasta and chicken dishes that were like half eaten and, and uh, cast iron. Yeah, in skillets, like under the under the bed and plates that were dirty in his closet. Just like, oh how, does it, how, does, oh how does that? And the only thing I could think of was like, you, you're such a slob. You don't ever clean it up. Then you have a girl come over. And so you're like, oh, put her to the bed. Yeah. You know yeah. Forget going out in the kitchen. You know what I'm oh, saying? It disappeared. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like a, I think I had a 1,700 square foot house. It's really not that far of a walk to the, <laughs> the other side of the house where this the sink was. Yeah. So I had that uh, for those were probably the two uh, worst roommates. But my first two were my my one of my best friends and my cousin. <clears throat> that when I bought the house, I bought it and it was a little bit more of a stretch than probably I could afford on my own. But I knew I had my best friend and my cousin that were going to rent rooms. So I was like, okay, I can mm. I can afford I can take this on because I'm renting rooms right. by myself. That was a lot to to handle. Probably would take up all my money, so I I wouldn't be able to do it. And they both bailed on me within the first six months. Mm. And so that like I, even though that they, they didn't do anything disgusting or bad at the house, that like they my first two roommates basically screwed me. I only I only lived because remember I got married young, so <clears throat> I moved out and I only lived out on my own for less than a year before I I got married, and then lived at the time uh, with my my wife at the time. Yeah. So before that, my roommate was, um, well, my first mentor, Don. Don and I lived together, but we were so similar. It, like, we, and working together, that was oh, probably a good environment. I oh, it was mm -hmm. just, that's all we did, bro, was work and, and just- I was work. always envious of Mark, my good buddy. They There there was four of them that lived together in this this big- this hardcore dudes. And they were all GMs. Yeah. And I was like always so jealous oh, of that yeah. environment, like of like, because we had that where- we Oh, were. we had the classic, like, what's you ever seen the memes where it's like a, t a dude will totally live in a place like this, like a fold-out chair, oh, yeah. a TV- Two mattresses on the Just floor. Just the mattress only. And no, the best yeah. that has ever been displayed is in, that, is in the movie Boiler Room. Yes. And the guys roll all over, pull up in their million, Ferrari. Million, yeah, million yeah, house. And there's like a boxes out and then like one couch, everyone's on the team. I forgot boxes. that. Yeah, scene. yeah. yeah. Like it's such one a great, picture it's such poster. a great scene that yeah. you could totally relate yeah. to. Now you went to college, so you had to have roommates I had, there. I had a bunch of living experiences, yeah. You have, huh? Yeah. So the first one, because it was a commuter school, San Jose State was a commuter school. So yeah. like I spent the first year um, at my parents and then like ended up the second year, one of my friends was living. He, he, he basically went into this uh, fraternity house and, and uh, became a pledge. And he's like, you know, we have these extra rooms that they're just trying to rent. And so you could actually probably stay with me and be my roommate and then live in this. And so I did it because I was just like, you know, I didn't want to live at my parents and like, I wanted to hang out. Uh, and it was like, it was, so I was in a fraternity house, but I wasn't in the fraternity. It was such a weird dichotomy. My but, buddy did that. But it was like, I actually preferred it that way because I didn't have to like do any of the you didn't have to play nonsense. Yeah. yeah, I was just. I was just there observing and then like sometimes they bring me in for like the hazing and all that. Like so I got You're like I'll help out for that. Yeah, I'll help <laughs> out. Yeah, the bu bullying me is really like, you know. I was like this this is There's fun. always that like isn't there like an under like a gay undertone with half the hazing? It's always kind of like, all right, pull your pants Depends down. Depends on the fraternity. Yeah, I, just, uh, so what guys doing? I think that's just guy stuff. That's like that's something that happens to us in our teenage there, years, you know? All you this know what's funny about that? that? There's, I think it depends on how like uh, repressed. Uh, that's what I'm saying. It's always. But, but I, I would say I saw that more in the Midwest than I did here in California. More repressed. Yes. Uh, in, in terms of like, you know, when I was at the Christian school, it was like, that was like every innuendo, every joke. It was like over the top. Everything was gay, this, oh, and like wow. mess with you this way. And I was like, hmm. Yeah, but anyways, so yeah, I, I lived there for a while and it was like, it was wild and it was dirty and there was cockroaches and it was oh. like, I was like, Ugh, I got to get out of here. I ended up... um uh, a couple of the guys, the older guys, like we ended up like deciding to go off campus and then live somewhere. So I lived there. Uh, and that was where I told you guys about this like really tall guy. He wanted to be a WWE star. He had like really long red hair, crazy red beard. Uh, this guy, Nate, and he had snakes. He was just, he, I don't know if he like, 
Jake. Idolize Jake the Snake you or what? Nate the Snake? Yeah, <laughs> Nate the Snake. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I never put that together. Yeah, dude. Uh, but he had like boa constrictors. You know, he had like pythons. Like, oh wow, he had like probably twenty snakes. Wow, in like full size. Like, and he, he would feed them on the schedule. I, I went in there to watch. He came with the house. At, at first, I thought it was kind of cool because I was like, oh wow, this is wild. Yeah. You know. But then that like, was hey, my black mamba went missing. You guys just, you know, yeah. that happened. Yeah. One of his pythons, uh, kept was notorious for like working its way out of the top. And when I was working at Buca de Beppo's and I came home, uh, late that night, uh, had the lights off and then I opened the sheets and then I turned the light like back on this Python oh came God. up from my pillow and it bit my arm. Oh my. And I was like, ah! Wait, it actually bit this, you? Yeah. And then I just like threw it and then Nate got all mad at me. He's like, don't hurt it. Don't hurt it. And I'm just like, get your snake oh out of Oh my God. That would traumatize me. It dude. freaked me out. Yeah. Like. Out of nowhere, a snake bites you. That's crazy. Yeah. And yeah. there was a python. It was it was a little trauma. Was it a bad bite? It, it, well, it was, you know they have little teeth. Yeah, the yeah. guy it bled, but it wasn't a big deal. But it was it was just creepy. Yeah, 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 like imagine yeah. the for the next ten years climbing into my bed. I'm like tripping <laughs> out. Yeah, now, do you always take the sheets off and like? Well, shit so that yeah. so when we lived in, I always check when we lived when we were kids. We lived in Don Pedro. We used to get scorpions all the time. Oh up there. Yeah, yeah, And I laid in your shoe. Too, I laid right? it. Oh yeah, on your towel in the shower. Like I've never been stung by one. Yeah, I laid in in my bed. And it was in my bed and it stung me on my back. Oh, and I wow. and there's a scorpion on my bed. And so it's a painful sting. How, right? Yeah. What is the, what does it look like, like afterwards? It's like a bad bee sting. Okay. Yeah. It's like a bad, cause these weren't like the Texas ones. Oh, or, you okay. know, it wasn't like a sucker yeah. this big. I mean, he was maybe, maybe that big. Well, you know? aren't the smaller ones are usually the more venomous ones. I, right? I don't know. I, I've only been stung by those ones. So okay. I have nothing to compare that's to. That's when Adam got That's, but, that's when you got a But it, it, it feels like a, <laughs> like a wasp stung you or a bee stung you. It's like, I would oh, say it's bad. close to that. Yeah. It's, it's more again, like freaking out. Yeah, I'm getting dude. in my bed sheets and now I got to think about, there could be a scorpion in my yeah, bed. I didn't oh. even know that was a variable. Yes. You know? I was like, oh, that's right. You don't expect a snake. <laughs> no, that was <laughs> not, that was not fun. Yeah. I was, I was not happy. Dude, about speaking that. of beds and stuff, um, the sleep eight system that we have, we had an extra one in Truckee. Yeah. I want to give that <laughs> zero to, snakes. I want to give, there's no snakes. In that. Yeah. I want to give that one to Vicky. Oh, you're going to hook her up like that. You know why? So she was talking to me. Poor huh, you guys know Vicky. Nice. Yeah. You know Vicky. Oh, I love she's Vicky. so she's the one that cuts our hair and everything, uh, gets us ready for the show. And she's so awesome. She's so she's like super trooper, hardcore, like I'll just push through. She was telling me she's been having really bad sleep, mm. sweats at night. I know there's lots of lots of stuff going on. Well, they had their I think their uh AC unit went down. So I'm like, dude, you gotta get the sleep, the eight sleep. Um, and so I'd like to give that to her. So I think it'll really help her out. I I've Good. I reached Good. a new I was talking to my buddy who um also is like this is he's like he was super interested, but he's like, Man, that's really expensive. And I'm like, you know what? Like, uh, I get it, right? I know it's not a cheap investment. I'm like, but if you actually sit down and you do the math on what you can keep your thermostat at, and I said, I hadn't at that time when I'm having this conversation, this was when I went to Universal, I said, uh, I had pushed, I, I can now let my thermostat get to 73 at night, and that thing, I sleep like a baby, fully covered. Which, like, by the way, just gives context. Normally, you yeah. would have your thermostat at sixty-five. Oh yeah, yeah. If I'm, if and you guys know, when we go traveling, yes, I put I the do. thing all the way down to yeah. fifty-five, as low as it'll go to cool the house and run it all night long. So the fact that I could let it get up to seventy-three, and I said, and honestly, I said the only reason why I know it's seventy-three is because that's all I've allowed it to creep up to. I haven't even tested to see higher. So, well, why we were in Universal, what happened? We got hit with that heat wave, right? So my house got all the way up to like 90 something degrees. And so even when we got home that night, oh, it took too long. To, I couldn't get it all the way cooler than like 76 degrees. Mm. But my eight sleep yeah. has been running consistently like that. And so I get in that thing and sleep 76 degrees in my house and slept just like it was 50 something degrees in there. So I really got to get better at allowing the temperature to get hotter in my house and not run my AC so much because as long as that sleep aid is running, I can let the house get way warmer. Yeah. And that, if you calculate what little or how, how much less you're running your AC oh, yeah. over the course You've of a year or two. Well, plus, it's, plus it individualizes. It individualizes the temperature uh, based off of your sleep patterns, which I which this is the only sleep system that does that that I know of. Yeah. I don't think anybody else has an AI that goes in there, watches your, your REM stages or pays attention to how many times you turn on the bed, move, whatever. If you snore, 
um, and then it adjusts the temperature um, according to and, it, and it's got two sides, so one for you and one for your yeah. your partner. It's so awesome, yeah, cool, cool stuff. Anyway, cool. speaking, of, we we brought we talked about chemicals early. I have to bring this up. I have to bring this up on the podcast. We talked about this yesterday, Doug. I want you to look up because it's a real thing. First, type in Cold War, and then Gay Bomb. <laughs> what? What's Cold War Gay Bomb. So I've talked about stuff it like this before. Sounds so absurd. No, this is real. I know. I know. That's why so I showed you. That's you saw why it. I was laughing because it in, was like, what? It, during the Cold War, you know, there were nukes pointed at us. We had nukes pointed at, at at the Soviets, and so all options were on the table. Nothing was too crazy. They went through, <clears> because it was just the, the, at the time everything was so scary. Mm -hmm. They literally worked on. They literally worked on a non. It's right there. Non lethal psychochemical weapon concept. This was proposed by the U S air force yeah. that you would drop <laughs> on the enemy or spray on the enemy to make them sexually attracted to each other. <laughs> <laughs> this is drop. real. Yes. Look, it's called the gay bomb. Yeah. They call it the gay bomb. No yeah. way. And listen, yeah. the idea, this is what literally says, the idea was to cause confusion and panic. <laughs> <laughs> What's happening to me? Yeah. Dude. And to encourage them to drop their weapons yeah. and trousers. The wow. weapon was intended to influence morale rather than cause death. Death. It was advocated as a humanitarian weapon. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what? That's a okay, real So that sounds real like concept. it was a created piece. What was in this thing? <laughs> Everybody's they looked at pheromone technology and, each and other, stuff like that. I mean, they didn't, they didn't disclose all like of a it. Big old estrogen bomb drop on I you mean, or that's not going to make you gay, right? Just, I don't know. That's, that's why I'm like, what, what are you dropping? Okay, I, I have bro. no idea what, what you drop on Jones bomb? I'm just throwing hormones out. What do you drop on somebody to turn gay? I can just picture the soldiers like they're all getting ready and just like... Like, oh, yeah. you're the enemy, but oh. Oh. dang, yeah. you really know how to move. John, you know? what's going on? John? <laughs> yeah, like, when does it kick in? You know, it's like, <laughs> Bro, it was actually, in 1994. Wasn't that long ago? No, no, no. That's when they, I think, came out with it. Uh, or not came out with it. Excuse me. <laughs> you, you no, came it out of the closet. proposed in 1994. Oh, my God. Hold on a second. I was wrong. They proposed this in 94? Oh, yeah. my God. This wasn't during the Cold War at all. Cold no. War ended. Yeah, no. this was recent, bro. What the wow. hell? It's like Desert wow. Storm. They were trying to do Desert this. What the fuck are they doing? <laughs> They're trying bro. to create a warm war. <laughs> Hold on, that's right. Did we have the Iraq War at that yeah, time? Yeah, it was around that wow. time. Wow, oh. wow, wow. Anyway, that, I can't believe that's a real thing. <laughs> I man. wonder if it's one of those things too, where they figured it out. They're like, nah, no, nah, we stopped. But yeah. they got it. Yeah, they did. We explain a lot of things right now. <laughs> mm. Hey, come over to my house. I'm having a party. There's just dudes here. Uh, you'll like it. Trust me. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be fine, bro. Don't worry about it. <laughs> hey, I have I uh, I have a, 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 sh a shout out today. So uh, <laughs> just stop it. Stop it. You should never went there. You yeah. never went there. <laughs> Whoa, just like yeah, like a disco ball just got, comes out of nowhere. He's got good dance moves yeah. all of a sudden. Yeah. What's going on? I want to know later everywhere. Like. Was it shaped like a big like a big? Yeah, penis? I know. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> big old goop. Oh my God. <laughs> okay, let's move on. Let's oh, shut uh, up. No, <laughs> no, Doug, Doug, Doug's like, please get to the you shot. You started it. Please get to All the right. shot. All right, uh, I have a shout out. I have a shout out. All right. uh, um, so I, I, I found um, this clip that had gone viral. Uh, I, I want to give credit, I believe, to Lewis Howes. I think it was on his podcast. I shared it with you, Sal, first. Um, the guy's Instagram is I am Scott Donnell. I am I am Scott Donald No Space. I like uh, I like this guy. Yeah, uh, He's really good. Yeah, he has a lot of uh, family uh, raising kids type yes. of content, and uh, you know I I'm I'm barely learning about him. So uh, you know from what I've read so far, from what I've watched so far, really like his content. I invited him on the show, so uh, we'll see if uh, his team gets back, gets back to our team, and hopefully have him on the show. But definitely uh, looks like a pretty good follow. So for all the parents or soon to be parents maybe out there. Yeah, I went through all of his, he sent me his, uh, his Instagram. Good stuff, like, right? Yeah, really good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I thought uh, uh, several clips, I was like, oh, that was really, really good totally. advice. So I, mm -hmm. enough for me to reach out almost instantly to invite him on the show. So give him a follow. It's uh, I'm Scott Donnell. If you eat a pretty clean diet, not a lot of processed foods, if you work out or if you eat a low carb diet or a keto diet, you work out a lot, you probably almost definitely need to supplement with electrolytes, especially sodium. Believe it or not, supplementing with electrolytes in the, in the context of what I said will improve your performance, your pumps, your recovery, your cognitive performance. Anyway, there's a company we work with, Element T, L-M-N-T or Element. They're the best electrolyte powder you'll find anywhere. It's got the right amount of sodium, no artificial sweeteners, uh, and no calories, no sugar. Go check them out. Go to drinklmnt.com forward slash mind pump. And you can get a free sample pack with any drink mix purchase. All 
All right, back to the show. Our first caller is Nicholas from New Jersey. Nicholas, what's happening? What's going on, man? How can I help you? How are you guys? Good. How How are you guys? Uh, Great to speak with you. Uh, Basically, uh, what I mentioned in the email is um, 48, um, about 5'11", 240. Um, Diet's not the greatest, but I do work out a lot. I do jujitsu twice a week. I just earned my black belt a few months ago. Nice. And when I'm not in the the gym, I'm uh, probably working out three days a week. As far as programming is concerned, I don't have any. Pretty much cherry pick workouts uh, to challenge myself. Um, it'd be uh, I'll, I'll I'll go run two miles. I'll do go to the park and do uh, body weight, you know, pull ups, dips, all that stuff. I'll do some strongman stuff, um, and I'll even go into the gym and do some barbell and uh, dumbbell work. But uh, I guess I guess the reason why um, I'm calling or wanting to call is I guess I'm sort of chasing numbers. I guess you could say, and I'm almost gonna be fifty. And my deadlift right now is around a low 400s, uh, between like 415 and 435. And I was just wondering uh, of any advice, if any, um, if it's possible to hit 500 or 505 by, before I'm 50 or by the time I'm 50. So I guess it's like a goal I've set of mine. Yeah, That's, well, if you're getting a low 400s with a crappy workout like that. Yeah, yeah, you're, you got, for yeah. sure, this <laughs> potential. Yeah, you're you're yeah. not following any programming at all. I mean, it's not. Uh, I, I've tried in terms of deadlifting. I've done 531. Jim Wendler's five three one. I've done. Uh, let's see, I think. Uh, 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 what was his name? Uh, Ed Cones. Mm-hmm. Um, for uh, deadlift workout. It just seems like I'm plateauing. Yeah. Well, you were and you doing not, those? You know, were you doing those while training jujitsu? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. So that's that's what I mean. So yeah. when you follow programming, like Ed Cone, for example, is one of the. By the way, people don't know oh, who he yeah, is. He's one of the beast. greatest powerlifters of all time. It's meant to be followed by itself. You're not meant to add any other high intensity style training or whatever. And you know, I don't right. need to tell you this. You you know, you you've been training jujitsu for a while, but it's not you know, it's not like going for a walk. So right. uh, it, it's definitely going to take away from or overwhelm your body's ability to adapt when you combine it with a program uh, designed to be run alone. Okay, so what you need, <laughs> yeah. So what you need to do is is follow programming that would be okay to follow while doing your jujitsu and some of your running. Maps anabolic once a week or twice a week max. Yeah, or even maps fifteen would be perfectly fine. Oh, oh, that's yeah, not a bad I think idea. maps fifteen and follow the barbell version. I think would be perfect <laughs> with what you're doing. It basically, it looks like this: about twenty minutes a day, uh, most days of strength training. So you're going in the gym, you're doing about two exercises, and that's it. But in combination. With your jujitsu, I think it's the perfect combination. And I think you're not going to have to worry about pushing your deadlift. I think you're just going to get stronger mm-hmm. by following uh, appropriate uh, programming like that. Okay. All right. Well, I well, appreciate the advice, guys. Uh, so you're saying ma- uh, MAPS uh, Anabolic 15? No, no, no. It's called MAPS 15. We'll send it to you. We'll send it to you. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was, I was confused. The ma- MAPS 15. I apologize. I was mixing the two yeah. up. Yeah, no worries. So it's MAPS 15. Do the advanced version. And continue doing your jujitsu, um, and don't do any more. So this is going to be your challenge. Your challenge is to not try to do more uh, because um, what, you, what you're probably That's doing what's now getting in the way. Yeah, yeah. What's getting in the way now is you're kind of training what you can tolerate, but you're not training okay. what is optimal. Uh, optimal is less than what you can tolerate, right? So um, I think that you, you'll see your strength will start to go up. If your strength's yeah. going up, you're doing the right amount. Um, and just, just follow it as it's laid out. Obviously you could devote okay. all your time towards more power lifting and that would move the needle quite substantially, but you know, you're passionate about jujitsu and you know, you got your black belt. So it's, this is the one way we could sort of try to weave those goals in there yeah. while you're also doing your thing. I, I, <clears throat> I really think it's uh, easy, I think it's the answer is easier than you, you think. I think that uh, you're going to get your 500 pounds. I feel pretty confident in that simply just having something laid out for you that is appropriate to what you're currently doing. And either MAPS 15 uh, or MAPS Anabolic one day a week is what I would have recommended. Either one of those, I think, is the answer. And to Sal's point, the greatest challenge for you is going to be, oh, I can do more, so should I do more? Like, you're going to have that. You're only basically in MAPS 15, you're doing two exercises a day. That's it. Like, you're you're in and out of there oh, wow. in 20. Yeah, two exercises. You just do two exercises a day. And it should only take you about 15, 20 minutes and you're done. 
and you're going to have this feeling of, oh, I could do another set or I could do another exercise. And so should I? No, you should not. Like the amount of jujitsu you're already doing is, is enough with that any more than that. And it's, it's only going to hinder your progress. You'll I see, think you'll see yourself. Get, yeah. And you'll see yourself get stronger. You'll see within the first couple of weeks, you'll see your strength go up and that, that's how you'll know like, okay, this is working. Okay. All right. Well, I appreciate the advice guys. And uh, thanks for taking my call. You got, um, like you got said, it, man. Are, yeah, you're one of the uh, few podcasts I listen to. So. Beautiful. By the way, are you training? Uh, I know you're in Jersey and you're doing uh, jujitsu out there. Are you training at Matt Sarah's gym or any of those out there? I think he's out there, right? Is no, there? no, it's a, it's a smaller gym located in uh, it's a uh, Central Jersey, smaller gym. All right, well, good. But, for you. Uh, yeah, it's uh, you know, I grew up a football and a wrestler, so this is uh, I guess uh, there's always a joke. Uh, jiu -jitsu, Brazilian jiu jitsu is uh, it's, an, it's a place where uh, old wrestlers go to die. I guess that's the, <laughs> yeah. the joke sometimes. Well, I don't know, man. Uh, 240 pound black belt in jiu jitsu. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't think you're dying. Yeah. Anytime. You're not dying anytime right. soon. That's pretty bro. hard, dude. That's, <laughs> I don't want to wrestle with you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, it's tough keeping up with the young guys, but they, but they keep me young. So that's the most important thing. That's awesome. Man. Well, good for you, man. Yeah. Right yeah. on, dude. Yeah. I like it. Hey, keep us posted. I'd like to hear how, how your results go, man. Absolutely. Will do, guys. Thank you for taking the call. All right, you Nick. Yep. It. You know, now yeah. for people listening, imagine getting that gorilla get in your hands. Like, <laughs> yeah. Fucking 240 Listen, pounds, black guy, belt, jiu-jitsu, football, and my, wrestling background. My first coach, my <laughs> yeah, first coach was like that. One. My first coach, uh, Garth Taylor, he was uh, one of the first Americans to get a gold medal um, in uh, some international, what, what tournament was it? Anyways, it was uh, one of the larger tournaments in, in jiu-jitsu. And, you know, when you get a, a guy who's good, who's good enough to to be one of the best in the world and also is 240 pounds, right. bro. Oh, my God. It's so Yeah, you get size on top of that. It yeah. feels like when you were five wrestling. Size your and skill, dude. Yeah, and I saw some some top-level MMA guys come in and train with him. And the whole and they were just doing jiu-jitsu, obviously. He was an MMA guy. But the whole time, you would hear the MMA guy go, oh, uh, uh, the whole time, and we would crack <laughs> up. You know, it's just brutal. But, you know, for people listening right now, if 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 somebody called me and said here, and they were almost 50, and they said, I want a, my, my deadlift is in the low 400s, and I want to get a 500-pound deadlift, typically my question back would be why. Mm -hmm. What are you going to get at? Are you going to compete? If you're not going to compete, you're, the, yeah, what's, the juice, what's the point? it's not worth the squeeze. You're not going to get much out of that, but the risk factor is so high. Now, the reason why my answer to him was different was because he's just farting around working out and he's already he's got already a low strong. 400. Yeah, yeah he's got a yeah. low 400 deadlift. 500 pounds for him is easy. It's yes. going to happen with some programming. Yeah. But if he was like following good programming and very dedicated and that was it and he didn't do any other things and, and then he says, okay, I want to get 500. I'd say, well, why? What? Uh, I don't think you're going to get much out of it. For this guy, it's like, here, let's just put you on some planned workouts uh, that are appropriate and you're going to hit 500 without even thinking. About Although I do right think dose. that's a, that's a fair um, conversation still to have. Sure. Right? Like, I think it's a good point that you make that anyways, because I agree. I think he's going to see it shoot up, but let's say we, he was a client and you were training him and you adjusted programming and he went from low 400s to all of a sudden 450, 475. And then we kind of plateaus and he's really stretching for that 500. I'm having that conversation, sure. right? I'm like, dude, you're strong as hell. We made great progress yeah. by just adjusting some things. Yeah. yeah, we could keep pushing it, but you're it, not going to see a lot from adding 30 pounds yeah. to your deadlift, except right. a much How higher. Feel injury. what you get it, <laughs> right? And yeah. to your point, like Justin made, is that you know, hey, if you if that's all you care about, well, then let's let's scale back on the jujitsu and only do jujitsu once a week, and then let's go right. all in on this weight training thing, and then yeah. I'll show you a five hundred pound deadlift, right? right? No problem. So, yeah. you know, you're trying to have your cake and eat it too. So there's definitely that you always want to consider the the risk versus reward. Our next caller is Sam from the UK. What's up, Sam? How you doing, Sam? How Sam, can we man. help you? Hey, hey guys, how you doing? All right. Good. Yeah, we're man. not bad. Good, right, so just found your podcast about six months ago, and I must say, you're absolutely fantastic, guys. You know, you've really helped me a lot. Um, <clears throat> so um, I started lifting maybe 18 months ago. I had a problem with my L5 vertebrae in my back, and the, uh had regular chiropractor appointments, and they recommended that I do some strength training. So I sort of plodded my way through on my own, and then, like I said, the start of this year, I found you guys. I started... Um, Maps anabolic, and the question I had was: um, I hear you say a lot about the rest times between two to three minutes is is optimum, and I noticed on phase three of anabolic, it's the at home version, by the way. I only have sort of dumbbells. Um, the rest times are like thirty seconds. Yeah, I just wondered what the um, the science and the theory was behind the short rest 
times in a phase three? Great question. So generally speaking, so there's, there's general um, truths. And then there are times when you move outside of that um, to elicit more change in the body, right? So phase three, you're looking at uh, strength endurance as the physical pursuit. You're also looking to maximize the pump itself, which also has some hypertrophy benefits. Now you'll notice the phase is three weeks and then you move out of it. Okay. You'll also yeah. notice phase one and two uh, are both, you know, between one and a half to three minute rest periods uh, between those. So six weeks of the program is the more general rest periods. You only have three weeks of these kind of shorter rest periods. So there is some value in shorter rest periods uh, to build some of that strength endurance, give you a better pump. Um, and that has value when it's thrown in occasionally uh, in your workouts. Now, the reason why we often communicate longer rest periods is when we're talking to the average person who doesn't have experience strength training, this is actually one of the biggest challenges. Yeah. One, of the, one of the biggest challenges the average person has is doing nothing in between sets. Uh, they often want to keep- into a circus. Yeah, they want to do more stuff. They want to uh, keep moving. They want to sweat. They want to you know, do circuit style training. So that's why we communicate the, yeah. the longer rest periods so much. The, the major point to be made, though, is that there's value in all of it, right? There's value in 30 seconds all the way north of three, four minutes long. And the idea is that you want to stay in a, a rest period time for a period of time in your total training journey, but move in and out of it. And typically, we recommend in that four to six week range that you do that and then you manipulate that variable. And I always lean towards whatever the opposite of what someone would do naturally. For example, you might have heard us say, you know, if I met a, a powerlifting guy and he wanted me to train him and we were, we we're manipulating his rest periods, I'm probably going to put him on 30 second rest periods because powerlifter guys let rest five minutes between every set. They sit down, they yeah. wait for a while. Yeah. And so that because he trains like that all the time, I know making him do shorter rest periods is going to be a new adaptation. It's going to be novel to his body and so yeah, it'll, okay. it'll, it'll cause his body the opposite is true to the uh you know the the mom that goes to orange theory or f45 or whatever you guys that she loves the circuit training she loves to move and sweat mm -hmm. or she used to take classes mm -hmm. like jazzercise and she's into that moving high beat type of training i make her rest two to three minutes and it's going to be so different from what she's used to doing so and that will become a novel stimulus for her so the novelty of of changing the rest periods, there's a lot of value in that and not getting stuck in one forever. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. So just sort of for the majority of, like you said, the phases, it's longer, but then it doesn't hurt sometimes to, to mix up those rest times just to change things up. A bit. That's right. That's right. That's right. But generally speaking, generally <clears> speaking, <throat> strength training has rest periods that are long enough for you to feel like you can exert maximal force for the next set. So that's generally speaking. Uh, but again, when it comes to hypertrophy, uh, there's general truths, which you'll apply 90% of the time. And then breaking those can add a lot of novelty and can often move the needle yeah. in a particular direction again. And so, and bodybuilders are good at this. You'll see yeah. them doing, you'll even see bodybuilders do these, what are called giant sets, which are really just another word for a circuit. Yeah. Uh, for certain body parts. a lot of uh, exercises stacked together, but then they rest a, a substantial yeah. amount afterwards. Yeah. But I mean, you, you'd be fine always doing two to three minutes. I'll just let you that, know that right now. But since. Okay. So even, even on the phase three, I could do that if I wanted to. If you wanted to. Yeah. Now you're following our programs. You can follow them as laid out, uh, but yeah. you, you'd be okay if you did two, you know, long rest periods. Mm hmm. Yeah. Okay. And just, just uh, if I've got time to to ask another guy. So I've, like I said, I've got um, just in my garage, like um, a flat bench and some adjustable dumbbells. Now each each dumbbell goes up to twenty five kilograms, which is like uh, fifty five pounds, I think. Yeah. Now on, on some of the things, I've kind of maxed out on them, so I've I've been having to to slow the reps down. Now I'm looking to maybe get either. Um, Maybe some bigger dumbbells, or didn't know if you would recommend getting like um, a barbell with some yeah. plates. Would love to see a barbell and plates, yeah, or, or get a membership at yeah. a gym. Do you have a gym nearby you can become a member at? Because you'll have a lot more yeah. access to 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 more equipment. That I think at this point you're okay, but you've been consistent for six months following our our, our type of programming. It's, yeah, it's getting. If you want to continue, you're, you'll be fine using what you have forever for fitness and health. But if you really want to keep yeah. progressing in terms of muscle and strength. 
It'll push you into the next level. Yeah, you're going to need barbells. And, I, yeah. I mean, a, a nice transition, though, if I was like, okay, the, the, the least amount of investment can I do right now where you're currently at and what program? I would actually transition you when you finish anabolic to MAPS 15 and get a barbell and some plates. Literally a, okay. bar, a barbell and some plates and then MAPS 15 advanced will be a, a, a new- You'll need a rack too, right? For what? Just the squats? Yeah. I yeah. mean, he could clean that up and do that too. Yeah. You could. You yeah, could. That's the only. That's the only thing, right? Old, yeah. So, you, I I would say, Jim. I mean, how consistent have you been for six months now? Like, is this like pretty good? Religious, yeah. I've, I'm doing the advance now, so I've, I've run it uh, March, April. Then I had a, a few weeks where I was just um, playing around with just some sort of body weight stuff, like calisthenics yeah. type stuff. And, um, I decided just just wanted to push it a bit harder and try and get a bit bit bigger. So um, I'm with the advanced one. I only started it um, sort of four weeks ago. Yeah, Sam, you're you're in uh, you're in the beginning of a of, an, of a great journey. If you're, you're consistent, I can hear it in your voice. Sounds like you're enjoying this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, really. Am, really am. I would I would get a squat rack and a barbell, uh, or yeah. I would go to a gym. Uh, and, okay. and you're gonna enjoy. You really enjoy. What what happens next uh, yeah. with with your body it's and your start really paying all out for you for totally sure. yeah yeah okay so so you said you think maps fifteen advance would be something to move on to absolutely to next program yeah yep that would be a good one okay all right well thank you very much for your time it's been a pleasure and uh, keep we'll, up the good work we'll send that over to you Sam all right thank you very much I really appreciate it all right, man. thank you very much you got it bye bye. Man. I wish I had an English accent. <laughs> it, sounds so much cooler. it always sounds great. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Anyway, uh, he's at that point now. I mean, uh, he's if he's got 55-pound dumbbells in each hand, he's slowing down his reps, he's consistent for six months, he wants to get bigger, he said. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, just adding a barbell and a squat I rack, mean, it, it, you're good. He's almost followed the perfect trajectory of like totally. you know, starting out. Sure. Like I would do like body weight, then I get into dumbbells, and now like progressing to – uh, barbells is going to be a huge uh, uh, difference. He's going to feel that like almost. That's why I went the direction I went. I was just thinking of what could he spend the least amount of money on yeah. and get like the next level yeah. of like gains yeah. with the least amount of effort. Yeah. They just feel like a barbell and a you know, 200 pounds worth of plates. And like, he, you know, if you really think about it though, I, yeah. so I like the convenience of being at home. You know how I feel about that. But yeah. if you really think about it, I don't know what, what the gyms around where he's at charge. But God, gyms nowadays are so like cheap. Oh, yeah, it's not, yeah. Yeah, it's not even access to so much equipment. That's for, so funny because that's how I think. And the fact that you went that way and I went the other I way because I was trying to be like, <laughs> hey, well, you know, he's into his routine. Yeah, now. He's already yeah. doing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got to consistent. It. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that was, but either way is, is fine. Totally. It's doing good. Our next caller is Sam from Maryland. Hi, Sam. Hi, how are you? Good. good. How are you? Good morning. morning. Good. Thank you so much for having me on and taking my call. Um, I will get right into it. I've always had trouble squatting ass to grass, but got consider considerably worse after my second of three kids. He was a big baby, 10, 10, um, vaginal delivery, if that makes a difference. I can get down into an Asian squat, but um, it's getting up. That's the issue. The lower third is the biggest trouble. Adding weight, especially back squats with barbell is very limited. I feel like I'm just going to fall back. A suitcase carry with dumbbell is more doable. I don't know if it's strength, mobility, or balance. Any insights on how to get better at getting up from Asian squat without using my hands? Yeah, I never heard it called that. By the way, you haven't? No. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah no. So you can so so you can sit. You can you without sit weight. Really low. You it. can sit in a squat with your heels on the floor, feet feet are flat. You can get there. Yes. Okay. So it's a strength issue. Um, now it does make a difference that you notice this, uh, more after having your third child and have, after having a natural delivery, mm -hmm. uh, because the pelvic floor muscles just weaken that area. Yes. Yeah. Uh, they, did you do any pelvic floor rehab, uh, post, uh, partum? I have, um, probably not as much as I should have. <laughs> okay. Did you notice any, any, now, why did you do the rehab? Did you have some, some issues that you noticed that you had to do some rehab on? Well, just the squatting. I okay. wanted to try to get better. Okay. So so pelvic floor, the pelvic floor is uh, very important in stabilization of the pelvis and then, it's, and, then, and, then, and then to the core, right? So if your pelvic floor has some imbalances, for lack of a better term, um, then it's going to be very, it's going to feel unstable in a bottom squat position, among other things. 
And so your body, your CNS is going to be like, you're not coming up. I'm not going to give you the strength uh, to come up. So I would do traditional pelvic floor exercises, but then for the squat, here's something you can do. Go down to the, not the bottom of a squat, but hover above the bottom and do some isometrics there and hold that position for whatever, 20 seconds or so. Come out of it, take a break, come back down. Now stop maybe three inches above that and do another isometric. So essentially what you're going to do is you're going to break that bottom third up of the squat into maybe okay. three or four isometric holds. And then through that process, you should be able to slowly start to build strength in that part of the rep. And then what you do is you can start to add load. Now you did say you fall back. So one way to I help. I feel like I, w I am. I so don't actually do. <laughs> okay. So one thing you can do if you have that feeling is rather than loading weight on your back is to load weight across your shoulders, like with a front squat. That can okay. help you a little bit um, once you progress to that. She could also do a lower bar squat and allow her chest to come forward a little yeah, bit too. Yeah. So that's or, also a possibility. Yeah, mm. or, or even a, um, a goblet. I do like, I so I love the advice of just not going all the way ass to grass and stopping it an inch to two inches short of that. Because what happens a lot of time, if you can get down there mobility wise, but then you feel weak coming out is you probably go all the way to the bottom and then you rest mm -hmm. and allow and, and st stopping an inch or two short of all the way to the bottom is going to force you to stabilize and strengthen that, that area where you feel weak. And so I love that piece of advice that by itself, in my opinion, is going to make a massive totally. difference. And then I think there's some value too in her doing hip thrusts. What about, um, because we did pelvic floor stuff in in Muscle Mommy, we did. What about following, pulling from that routine? Totally, uh, I like that. Yeah, that would uh, be, that would be a great program. And we yeah, have we hip thrust in, included in there. That. Yeah. Do you have Muscle Mommy yet? No, I don't. Okay, let yeah. us let us send you Muscle Mommy. In there is yeah. pelvic floor stuff. There's hip thrust, and then take the advice that Sal was saying with the squats. I would just modify them and stop them short. And, and what you do, by the way, when you get down and do that isometric. Um, you know, you can just hold it, but while you're holding it, what I want you to do is I want you to tense up. Yeah. I want you to tense up your core, tense up your pelvic floor, keep your feet grounded. So pretend like you're, you're grabbing the floor with your feet and just create connection. That's what you're looking for with that isometric. Yeah. We, we need to reconnect. We need to get that established again. I think too, there's a lot of value in single leg squats, uh, in, in this instance and, and being able to like sit on a bench and then, uh, drive up off the bench with one foot, uh, to be able to generate the force. What we're lacking there is that connection of being able to recruit, uh, we're in that bottom position. And so to be able to do that, sometimes you need a prop or something to kind of help initially, uh, to, to, to be able to kind of help you get into that um, squat, but for the the process of working on that and really being able to uh, regain that connection to recruit muscle to get up and drive up off the bench, uh, that's what we want. That's to do. in Muscle Mommy, right? All of it. Are yeah, you? Yeah. Are I think you? It is, uh, yeah. It's yeah. in Muscle Mommy. Are you um, generally really hyper flexible? Uh, yeah, I would say so. Okay, so hypermobility um, in general, this is how I would train. It's not so. It's not super common. You know, usually I work, when we when people hire trainers, they have tightness issues. But every once in a while, you'll get somebody with some hypermobility. Um, so a lot of your reps are going to be stopped short of the deepest you could go. This may be even true for some of your upper body exercises because the issue with hypermobility is connection is cre is being able to maintain. Tension. So think that in your mind when you're doing this. Tightness, tension, mm -hmm. connection. Don't relax uh, in this in, in those positions. So like I said, you go down, stop two inches below, but above the, the bottom, and then get real tight and hold yeah. that for 15, 20 seconds, and then come out of it. If you can't stand up, that's fine. Just hit the floor, come back up, stand up, rest like you did a set, rest for a couple minutes, try it again, but then stop maybe an inch above that. And then you're, you'll be able to comp get get that bottom third of the rep yeah. covered with each of those. As much as you can get that core engaged okay. uh, again and like, you know, overemphasize that because, you know, too, that's been a big uh, loss in terms of our connection through, you know, pregnancy. One more thing I'm going to add, I, I, uh, I totally forgot. Um, th do this often. So, you, okay. so or multiple times a day. Uh, I, I would do I would do this at least once a day, sometimes twice a day. So you're going to okay. do uh, one set of each kind of position, maybe two times a day. Just each time weight? intensify body weight. Yeah, just connecting, just connecting, um, okay. and and you'll see pretty quickly within a day or two. Like in fact, if you do it twice a day, you may notice the second time around. Ooh, I feel 
like I can start to connect to certain things. So, uh, but practice it frequently and we'll send you maps muscle mommy as your workout. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Thank you so much. Yeah, you got Thank it. You, right. Thanks for calling in. All right. Thanks. That, uh, I, I've God, I've said this before. L Luna, there's, we still, um, Luna's, oh, we haven't talked about them for a while. I know. This is a company that sends a physical therapist yeah. to your home. Yeah. And uh, the biggest value I can see with that is postpartum. Because yes. you just had a baby, you're not going to the freaking PT. Yeah. Yeah, but pelvic floor rehab or postpartum rehab is so valuable it's insane i used to train women yeah it's always recommended but it's not like protocol no it should be I, I would train women whose kids were four and five and then they still had issues with with the after they had their baby that they hadn't dealt with and then we'd have to go through the rehab process so. i mean this is what i mean i was really adamant about us putting this in muscle mommy for yeah. that reason because i just feel like it's neglected so totally. much and yeah. i know like when we first were designing we we're like oh is it necessary for us to do that this is more like an aesthetically driven program but it's like no if it's going to attract moms, that has to be one of the most neglected things that yeah. I see uh, postpartum. So you, you, you were right. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Our next caller is James from Illinois. What's up, James? What's up, James? What's going on? What's happening? What's going on? Um, obviously, I want to say thank you guys for having me on. I appreciate all that you do. And I'll go uh, right into my question I sort of wrote down. So the gist of... Uh, my question says, how does someone who has consistently been working out since the age of 12 or 13 keep variety in their training uh, without sacrificing consistency? A little bit of background of my training. I, I got into working out uh, because my dad sort of made me growing up uh, in, a, in a good way. But truthfully, he's always been jacked and I sort of wanted to be like him. Um, and really, he did lay a good foundation for me. Um, and probably I'd say since the age of about 14, freshman year in high school. Um, my main influences of training have been from Mike Boyle, Joe DeFranco, Jay Frugia, and Charles Poliquin. Um, and most of my training has been centered around full body training, except maybe like a short stint in college. Um, it felt like a bro split maybe for like two months at most, but that, that was very short lived. And really I've met, I'd say 99% of my strength goals. I'm happy with my physique, uh, my performance, but lately it just seems a little monotonous to go into the gym stay motivated when my whole day is centered around fitness and for reference I'm I'm 26 I'm a high school weightlifting teacher and then I'm a personal trainer when I get off from teaching with about 20 sessions per week there um, I did play college football actually it was in the same conference that Justin is it well played in and my wife and I have a seven pump tool. Awesome. all right awesome. so great I love so, this question yeah let me let me this let me uh um kind of go back to some of the stuff you said so you've been working out consistently for about 13 years, you're yeah. a weightlifting teacher in high school, it says up here, and a personal trainer when you're done. Happy with his physique and strength. Yeah, you're already consistent. I mean, you're, you don't, there is no issue with consistency. Just go do something you enjoy. Like, if you came to me, if you were my friend, I would have no fears that you're going to stop working out. I would just say, and I, and I think what you're asking is, how do I stay motivated but follow good programming and stay consistent with the kind of programming. It doesn't matter at this point. Like you're, you've been working out so long, just find something active yeah, that you like. Get stimulated. And you, there is nothing. There is nowhere you could go wrong. The only way you could go wrong is if you stop. Uh, if you stop being active. But at this point, at your level, with your how long you've been training, with your understanding, you mentioned a bunch of giants in the strength training space. These are people that we look up to, that we learn from as well. And again, with your background. I would just pick something active that you think is interesting and go for it and have fun doing it. There's really no, there's no, there would be no challenge. Like I said, I don't, I wouldn't fear you would stop. Now, if you told me, Hey, I just started working out six months ago and I'm kind of getting bored. What do I do? Can I just switch it up all the time? I'd have different advice, but someone like you, it's like, just, Pick something you like that's active. Go for it, and you'll be fine. I, I would. I wouldn't worry I about might, you. Not <clears throat> I might challenge you a little bit differently. Um, you know, I think because of your background, your experience, your knowledge, you're happy with physique, happy with strength. I might stretch you a bit and say, why don't we do something that you probably wouldn't do? So maybe it's not something you necessarily love, but maybe something you know you maybe need. Like maybe you've never been like the mobility guy and you go really deep down that rabbit hole. Or maybe you've never got into uh, kettlebells or, or, Mace, or yeah, Pilates. <laughs> I don't know yeah. about that. But, uh, no, I would, don't do Pilates. I would, I, would, I, would, I would pick something because and, 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 you know better than anybody because how long you've been doing this and you also have been trained by, by great the great minds in our space. 
um, you know, what is it you don't do enough of, or what is it that you would, could complement your overall health and fitness journey since you are happy with strength, physique, and those things like, yeah. what are you missing or you need? And maybe challenge yourself in that direction of, hey, I've never really put a lot of effort into trying whatever X is and maybe do that. And I think that being just a novel stimulus and being challenged that way, I think you'll enjoy some of the gains and the challenges you have. And that this is something that, and I like this question because I feel like we fall in this category ourselves a lot. Like I'm constantly having to, give myself new goals or new things to focus on because I've kind of done the whole get as strong as I can or look as cool as I, I can possibly look and proven that to myself that I can do that. It's like, what's going to keep me doing this into my late forties and fifties and forever. It's like, I have to find new ways to challenge my fitness. And so I, I would probably challenge you in that direction. You know, it's really yeah. the answer is going to be whichever one of those uh, resonates with you, whichever, because like, you know, you know, coming right. from Adam, the reason why Adam likes saying that. That's what excites him, mm -hmm. right? So whichever one of those resonate is fine. There's really no wrong answer here. The only wrong answer would be to stop. Yeah, I mean, just personally, this is where I I tend to lean more towards the unconventional side of things just as like something too that was like a little bit on the fray, uh, looked a little bit more dangerous, but you started to figure out like, oh, wow, this actually applies well uh, to, to address some, some strength, uh, needs that then I could kind of bring back. And then it, it actually reinvigorated me, uh, to, to pursue more, uh, strength training, uh, afterwards. So like our unconventional program, uh, old, old time strength was, That'd you know, good. kind of the, that that was that, that was built off of that idea is like what can we do to challenge yeah. people in a totally new way that um you know fills a lot of those gaps of of uh, angles and and certain rotational movements and um stability that uh, isn't being addressed you know here's a third option james you're an athlete uh so another option is to find a competition and train for it that sure. almost always if somebody's an athlete they have an athletic mind and you're young. Yeah. You're in your twenties. Yeah. Uh, they you're too young for pickleball, so don't do that. Yeah, yet. don't do that yet. That's, but that's uh, for old guys. But yeah, you, you, you tried getting fat. That's a possibility. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's fun. I guess I've never, I've never really looked into. I've never done a a strong range competition. I've never done a powerlifting competition. Oh yeah, there you go. Things along those lines. Um, so I guess yeah, that that would be an idea. Old time strength would be a great one. Yeah. I like I like that advice. Old time strength is You'll great. You'll geek out on it, dude. And if it's, you want to do powerlifting, we have a powerlifting program we can send to you that you could kind of look through. Uh, although I have a feeling you, you you understand strength training programming pretty well. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Comp look for athlete when I look athletes like like easy. It's an easy button. I'm not saying this is always the answer, but an easy button with an ex athlete is find a competition. And that tends to spark I, all those feelings you're looking for. I do want to comment though on something that Sal said about me and being excited about that. I don't, that's not true at all. Uh, when I let go of uh, looking badass and being strong to be this mobility guys, it was very challenging. I was not excited about it. You get excited it was, about the challenge. It, well, what was exciting was when I started to reap the benefits of the discipline yeah. and the hard work. Like what I, what I, what it got exciting was when I started to see you know, my low back pain go away when I saw the increased mobility and range of motion that I had, the the ability to be comfortable in a squat. That started exciting me, but that wasn't until months and months later of consistency that of like committing to something that I knew would be mentally challenging for myself to let go of this, you know, idea I need to be this buff guy or I need to be so strong. So I, you know, that and I think there there's a a lot of value in that for people that have committed to being in this fitness thing for the rest of your life is it, it, it's not always going to be exciting and fun. Sometimes it's what you probably need and what's best for you. And what's on the other side of that is exciting, but getting through it isn't always, you know, exciting. So I, I don't want you to be fooled into thinking that I just love to challenge myself in these words. Like, no, it was, it, it sucked for a while. It definitely sucked, but you it like was that it sucks. very, very <laughs> rewarding. Very rewarding. Did you, find it, did you guys find it? I guess when you were training full time, did you find it difficult for to find motivation for your own workouts? Because I, I sort of feel that I'm in year four now of teaching and training, mm -hmm. um, and it's like, man, some days I'm just like, hell, I don't know if I can get this in or want to get it in when I just spent my whole day mm -hmm. telling other about everyone else how to do this. Have you followed our Mass Fifteen sure. program yet, yeah. too? 
I have not. I have not. I have followed. I have a decent amount of your programs. Actually, a lot of our class surround is surrounded by going nice. through your programs. Um, but I don't have. No, I don't have. You're, so I like old timey as a suggestion. I also like Mass Fifteen potentially for you because. Mm -hmm. You also might be at a place in your journey, which this was an interesting place for me too, is realizing like, oh shit, I don't need to nearly train as much and as intense Gain as I need to. Gain all the benefits without all the work. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, you've put so much, this is what's so great about when you've put the years of consistency in like you have and reach strength goals and physique goals that you already have. The amount of volume, intensity, and training that's required to actually still maintain all that is a lot less than you than yeah. you probably realize, and that might be a, a, a valuable part of your journey right now, is to maybe just reduce that. Especially considering you're having these feelings of like, oh man, I'm training all, I'm working all these hours, and I'm training these clients. The last thing I want to do is go spend another hour, yeah. hour and a half in the more gym by myself. Taxing. Yeah. It's like you know, well, what does that look like if I just did two effective exercises mm -hmm. and been done it and done it in 15, 20 minutes, and I walk away like, and then that becomes exciting because you realize, oh shit, I'm doing way less volume yet. I'm maintaining a lot of my strength. I'm maintaining a lot of the look I have. So you might also be there. So maybe dabble in one of the one or two of those, or or follow one and then follow the other uh, for the next like six months. Yeah, that might or be. even just change the environment. I mean, it's your work environment. So you're working in there. Yeah, that too. You know, I used to work out at a different gym half the time because of the ones. Yeah, I that's, what I, that's what I've been doing. Um, I don't. I can't work out where I where yeah. I train and work. We so I go somewhere else. Yeah, or you, go out, or you go outside, do outside workouts. Like literally, there's no wrong answer yeah. except that you stop. I know. So you just okay. gotta, yeah, you just gotta think. I to think yourself, we all get I through this at a certain point, you know, yeah. like in in our careers. It's just like, okay, how do we re-stimulate, reignite this passion that you know you came in guns blazing? It's like, where is it? But you can find it. It's just yeah. you got to figure out like what stimulus is going to resonate. Well, thank you guys. You what got we, it, what are we sending over to him? Are we sending him 15 or are we sending old timing? Let's send it both. He's a teacher and uh, it'll be good stuff for him to show the kids too. So let's, well, you yeah. get two programs, James. Totally. Yeah. Well, thank yeah. you guys very much. Yeah, you got yeah. it, man. Do you want to shout out your high school or what? Yeah. It's uh, Limestone High School in Peoria, Illinois. There you go. Right on. All right, man. All right, James. Cool. Thanks, guys. Good. Did you think I was saying it's easy for you? <laughs> no, no, no. I think you. I think you like. No, it's part I, of your character. Part of your character. I'm giving you a compliment. Relax. It's not. Part of your character <laughs> is you choose hard shit, and then afterwards you enjoy. You enjoy the, the being able to do that. Well, okay, yeah. Afterwards, but there's no like you made it sound like it's like I enjoy to go do this shitty thing that I don't like doing. Like no, I don't. No, it's what like I meant was difficult. it excites you. So, did you agree with what he said? I or? mean, uh, both of you are. Uh, Shut up, Justin. Yeah, yeah. arguing. <laughs> <laughs> but you're arguing over nothing. Yeah, <laughs> uh, he's right. Well, I, I, he's right. I, the only reason why I commented because I didn't wasn't going to comment. I like, know what I, you mean. You think I'm saying to him like you you know you do something you hate you're gonna love it right away. Right, right. right. And yeah. I just want him to know that like because I do think this is important for those that are listening that uh, have made this a thing forever or that are going to do especially for longevity. Yeah, for, especially for and longevity. and we we and we are all guilty of this ourselves, right? Yeah. You get in a place where you feel just like he does. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes you've exhausted all the stuff you're excited about, and that's fun. Yeah. You know, yeah. getting hella good at my deadlift was a lot of fun. Getting hella good at my squat, that was really fun. What was not fun? You're just trying to express that it's a discipline that you do that. Yeah. Yeah. Not, not that you're like, yay, I'm going to go fucking do no. this. Yes. Because, yeah, no. I, you know, I also think, too, that, like, like, so, for example, the mobility one, I always go back to that because that one was not only physically challenging, it was also very mentally challenging for me because I had to let go of a lot of old insecurities. Yeah, of course around being very buff and very strong and like that's something that I wanted so bad. And I do think that we all reach this place. That's my insecurity, right? So somebody else's might be something else. It might be strength totally. related or, or, totally. or performance related, whatever. But I do think it's important in our journey uh, that you, you find a time where yeah. you challenge those insecurities and pursue another goal that maybe you never would. Yeah. And that was kind of what you I know what I do when I get bored is add another peptide. <laughs> I mean, that's a move right there. It's, we'll it's novel. It, it, when I run not, out of peptides, it's, it's novel. then I'll do something else. Yeah, yeah. I'm not feeling it. <laughs> Good stuff. Look, if you like the show, head over to mindpumpfree.com. We have a guide that teaches you how to squat like a pro. You can find it again at mindpumpfree.com. You can also find us on Instagram. Justin is at mindpumpjustin. I'm at mindpumpdestefano, and Adam is at mindpumpadam. Adam. 